Hello and welcome. Today we are making Easter basket cookies. But first, my apologies about being so long between posts. Sadly, the day after the last video began what feels like tripping from one problem to another. Hopefully, I'll be able to get back into the swing of things again starting this today. So, a thank you to everyone for your patience, and now for our ingredients. You will need one or more of the following. Potato sticks. If you've never seen these, they're like tiny french fries made entirely of the crispy bits. Fantastic. Uh, crispy chow mein noodles. These might be a U.S. only thing. I'm not really sure if they're av available outside the United States. So, if you can't find these, there's a, the other two items. Pretzel sticks. Preferably ultra thin if you can find them. For our coating, you're going to need one or more of the following. Chocolate or white chocolate melts or candy melts. You don't want to use normal chocolate for these and I'll explain why in a moment. And for those who live in the more hot areas, the candy melts is probably the best way to go so it doesn't melt if you have to be outside. And we'll also be using some cupcake cups to essentially form them and make sure we get the right size on them. Now, to show you why we don't want to use real chocolate, I melted about a quarter of a bar of dark chocolate so we can compare what the look and texture are before and after melting. So looking at the unmelted piece, we can see it's glossy and slightly darker in color. That's the temper of the chocolate. Decidedly not tree-like, though. Where the melted and re-solidified is not glossy and much more brown, much more tree-like, but touching the reformed chocolate shows it gets on your fingers with the slightest touch. Scratching the unmelted chocolate, you can see it sort of peels off like a wax, whereas the solidified chocolate, it merely pushes it out of the way because it's so soft and crumbly. These melts are designed to not need tempering or lose their temper, and therefore much easier to work with on this. In a future episode when we do chocolate, I'll explain the whole thing about tempering and seeding chocolate and a bunch of other things you can do to make it work. But for today, definitely use the melts. They're much easier for this sort of thing because they're made to not lose their hardness ever, no matter how many times you melt them. For both the types of chocolate melts, we just need to microwave them for 15 seconds at a time until they're melted. The candy melts, actually, you just do 30 seconds at a time since they melt at a slightly higher temperature and have less of a water content. Let's start with the combo you are probably going to be the most familiar with, the white chocolate and pretzel. For these, I found some ultra thin pretzels, and while those will work the best and I'd recommend them if you can find them, you can use normal pretzel sticks, or even regular pretzels. With all these, you're going to want to break them in uneven lengths. For ultra thin pretzels, these are good at about half size. For normal thickness pretzel sticks, we want to break them into about a third each. I did have a bag of normal pretzels and broke a few of the them off to just add some curves in here make it look a little bit more real nest like once broken up you will want to give them a good mixing and get them mostly coated you don't want them to be completely coated because the cookie becomes a little too dense to chew but it also makes them look a little more like actual birds nests because wood is not a uniform color from there we just want to drop them in a cupcake cup form a hole in the center when you get towards the end and you have everything inside just use your fingers to kind of move it around to make sure you got them in the right place and then into the refrigerator or on the counter they can cool just you want to make sure they get cooled off all the way down to room temperature so for our potato sticks we just need to do the same thing we did with the pretzels this one's going to stand out a bit as a slightly weirder combo at first glance but is actually surprisingly good and has been done before the salty crispy french fry potato chip taste is complemented very well by chocolate lays themselves had a chocolate covered potato chip for a while <clears throat> now, this was not the case with white chocolate and candy melts, as both of those tended to overpower the french fry fry potato taste really fast. So, this is, if you're kind of weirded out by it, it's kind of this, if you see people, like, dip their fries in their chocolate frosty, it's pretty much the same concept. Um, one thing you want to do is let the chocolate drop drip off the sticks a bit before adding them to the cup, and that way you don't make too thick of a chocolate base for your nest, because at that point it can just kind of be overpowering for everything because you just have a big chunk of chocolate at the bottom. Arguably not bad, but not what we're looking for. Now for the candy melts, it is, unsurprisingly enough, the same exact process. I live in a hot area and for outdoors the candy melts were the only one to really hold up well in the 90 plus degree heat we're having during the day right now. I made one set with chow mein noodles and one with pretzel sticks to test the bite difference. I found the pretzels being slightly less dense made the candy melts actually work a lot better. The denser and harder chow mein noodles didn't work so well. The chow mein noodles did have great taste and worked well with the chocolate, but they were a little bit too dense combined with the harder candy melts. Oh yeah, and while I was looking at examples for this recipe, I found a lot of them 
ended up being made quite large. Some of them ended up two to three times the size I made here. And from all our testing, pretty much everyone agreed they were way too much for one setting and the smaller form factor here worked out a lot better. And with that, we have our bird's egg nests all ready to go. Decorate with candy eggs and you are good to go. I tried everything from jelly bean eggs to larger chocolate eggs just for a variety and some laughs. Some of them even looked like they had like ostrich eggs in them. They're a nice treat for Easter and can quick look quite nice. Plus using the melts like we did here means no chocolate covered hands and fingers. Okay, maybe not no, but a lot less chocolate covered hands and fingers. So that's something. So, for all those still here, thank you all for all your support and time. It means the world to me. In the last few months, it really helped me keep in a positive headspace during some hard times. And if you've not already subscribed, please do for more videos like this and hopefully a little bit less time between them. So, as always, I hope you have a great meal and a great day.